the wall there is built by the Romans in about the year 300. So it's a pretty old wall. Pretty old wall, yeah. They built this uh, sundial? No, they didn't build a sundial. To your left, you can see the top of the gherkin. Have to go up high, huh? Behind you is the shard. And then behind you, on your left again, is the shard. Which we saw yesterday. The shard, yeah. And now uh, there's the uh, first view of the tower. Tower of London. If I remember right, you're part of the old uh, City of London walls. Yeah. Do you want me official map? Right? So, 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 so. Yeah, I'll put my ticket there. Right. You've got your new ticket there. Well, I'll put your ticket again. Don't lose it. Are you sure? Yeah. 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 Yeah.
their heads would be taken down to London Bridge. And there they serve a purpose in warding off other would-be traitors as they enter London. The headless bodies, though, these were important people, uh, we have to keep an eye on those. The headless bodies brought back inside the Tower of London, where they will be laid to rest here in the Chapel Royal of St Peter at Isn't that lovely, ladies and gentlemen? Great day after the children, that must have been. <laughs> so, it's a love for a tour. Yes, yes, sir. No, ladies and gentlemen, it's a love for a tour. Let's be heading into the tower itself. <laughs> we are now in an area called the Outer Ward or Outer Bailey of the Tower of London. The area between the inner and outer plates of walls. The road running between the two here, around the Tower of London, is also known as Mint Street. It's called Mint Street because this is where oil, the Royal Mint was located. First coin struck the tower around 1100, moved from here in 1810. Now, as you can see, these houses are still used. Or, when you become a young warder like myself here in the Tower of London, or B Beta, uh, traditionally, and even today, we have to live in the Tower of London. So these buildings now are accommodation for young warders. When you move into the Tower of London, you can move here with your families. I live in that rather large four-bedroom house on my own. That's why I'm the happy one, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> now, prisoners, when they're held at the Tower of London, were held all over the Tower. There wasn't really a central location. So all of the towers have a history when it comes to prisoners. The Beecham Tower, the Devereux Tower, and as you make your way down the outside walls, this, the Byward Tower, called the Byward Tower because it stands by the outer wall of the Tower of London. Lords Kilmarnock and Balmerino were kept to that tower after the second, but also failed Jacobite Rebellion in 1745, led by Bonnie Prince Charlie. They made the way from that tower and up to Tower Hill in 1746 to lose their heads to block an axe. Their good friend Simon Fraser, the Lord love it, he was kept to the King's House, now known as the Queen's House. He was beheaded the following year, 1747. And Simon Fraser, the Lord love it, was the last man beheaded in England as a form of execution. To the left of the Byward Towers is Sally Port or Byward Foster. Now, the River Thames will be the main thoroughfare through this part of London and indeed through the south part of England, so it makes sense the Tower had access to the river. This is one of three entrances to the town of London via the River Thames. And it's worth noting that, amongst others, on the 29th of May 1533, Henry VIII stood here awaiting the arrival of his second wife, Anne Boleyn. She came here to the town of London in preparation for her coronation, as, uh, came in her preparation for her coronation on the 1st of June. She was already pregnant with her only child, Elizabeth, who also went to the town of London via the same archway as her mother in 1558 preparation for her coronation as Queen Elizabeth I. Now, moving around behind me now is the Bell Tower. The Bell Tower was built around 1190 during the reign of Richard I. And it's called the Bell Tax on top to his belfry. And within the belfry today is the oldest surviving curtain found in the city of London. The very name dates from 1651. The bell itself would generally run as a warning, but it was run, gates were closed in the of burn, but it was also run one hour before every execution. The Bell Tower is one of the oldest and strongest. The, the 13 towers that make up the inner defensive wall. And like all the towers, it's comprised of two chambers, one on top of the other. Now, both the chambers of the Bell Tower were used at some stage to house prisoners. The most notable of the lower chamber is Sir Thomas More. At the same time, the upper chamber is good friend John Fisher, the Bishop of Rochester. Now, both men in prison here at the tower during the religious upheavals of Henry VIII's reign. Both men made the way from this tower up to Tower Hill in 1535 to have their heads removed from their bodies. Both men now lie quietly rest here in the chapel royal of St. Peter and Vincula, but their heads lie quietly rest somewhere else. Uh, Sir Thomas More, for instance, was canonised as a saint in 1935 by the Roman Catholic Church. He also kept the bell tower, but in the upper chamber was a man called James Scott, and James Scott was the Duke of Monmouth. Now, James is the eldest of 12 to 15 illegitimate children, rather by Charles II. Now, Charles II dies in 1685, probably died of exhaustion. Yeah? <laughs> 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 Which is smart, I don't have a time <laughs> Anyway, Charles II had a lot of children, but he had no children with his wife. So, the throne of England passes to his younger brother, James the Duke of York, then James II. Now, James II wasn't popular with his brother, 
There he was, a Catholic. Actually, Charles II was a Catholic, but he was a party hangover at church type Catholic. I quite like those. Uh, whereas James II was a good old hang and burn and kill him Catholic. We don't like those at all. So, Monmouth uh, decides to rise a rebellion from popular Protestant support in what became known as the Pitchfork or Monmouth Rebellion. Unfortunately, his army was defeated at the Battle of Sedgemoor in Somerset. He was eventually captured and held for three days and two nights in the Upper Bell Town, or he was beheaded on Tower Hill by a man called Jack Ketch. <laughs> After his execution, ladies and gentlemen, Monmouth's family came forward, <laughs> apparently they liked a painting of him, so Monmouth's head and body were returned here to the Town of London, where the head was reattached to the body by the Town Surgeons. A painting of Monmouth has then made, which is said to be a good likeness of him, most like a pale. <laughs> now lies here in the chapel royal of St Peter and Mikula with his head quite firmly attached. That lovely story in the tower later. So, so return the tower. Yeah. Sure. Yes. So, so up for tour ladies and gentlemen. Let's be ready. Refurbished in 1939. So, uh, we plan to put Adolf Hitler in there if we ever caught him. <laughs> Made our way along Water Lane, as I said before, now stood beside Traitor's Gate. Traitor's Gate, obviously a more substantial entrance to the Tower of London, via the River Thames. Uh, there's a third entrance to the Tower of London to my right. You can just make out the toilets there, one of two main sets of toilets just beyond that. It's the Cradle Tower, the third entrance to the Tower by the river, built in the early 14th century and named after a type of boat which was adapted to use it. So, Traitor's Gate, ladies and gentlemen. Built in the reign of Edward I, originally called the Watergate, became known as Traitor's Gate over the Tudor period. Above Traitor's Gate was St Thomas's Tower, named after St Thomas of Becket. And this building here is known as the Medieval Palace. This, ladies and gentlemen, would have been Edward I's Royal Palace. <laughs> Sorry, ladies and gentlemen. I was on the lookout for a future Mrs. X or Mrs. Cold, I I forgot where I was, I don't listen to this stuff. <laughs> it's given to me on script. Well, it's given to me on script at the top is a big uh, mouse, because it was all bought by Walt Disney. You know, but, uh, I'm a milk with the basic stuff. Anyway, yeah, that's right, it's gay. I'm originally called the Watergate. Calm down, Americans, I don't know. <laughs> this is known as the Medieval Palace, ladies and gentlemen. This would have been Edward I's Royal Palace. He had aboard his royal barge here. What are you two up to? <laughs> Where are you from? Um, Morocco. Morocco, I like Morocco. Uh, what was I? Anyway, Medieval Palace. This would have been Edward I. Come on, take a picture. I'm still busy. <laughs> are you sure I know I? Yeah. Uh, so. Uh, Edward I would have moored his royal barge here, then made his way into his royal palace. Now, while you visit the Tower of London, ladies and gentlemen, you can get entry to this area by these stairs to my left. Once you get to the top of the stairs, you then enter that. See those two people there? It's a one way system, they're going the wrong way, they're French. <laughs> <laughs> Put signs up, I don't know. Anyway, you make your way through the medieval palace, cross into the upper Wakeful Tower. Then into the southern, east, not French Morocco, so they're different. Then. <laughs> <laughs> so the southern, eastern, and eventually northern ramparts, which are all open to visit and all well worth visiting, ladies and gentlemen. Now, when it comes to prisoners, the most notable prisoner held here at the Upper Wakefield Tower was Henry VI. Yeah. And Henry VI was in prison in the Tower of London during a period of time in England called the Wars of the Roses. Now, the Wars of the Roses was a civil war. It went on for about 30 years, fought between the houses or families of. York and Lancaster. It was called the Wars of the Roses because the participants had picked flowers from the garden to represent their individual sides. So you have the Red Rose of Lancaster and the White Rose of York. So the Lancastrian King Henry VI is now in prison in the, in the Upper Wakefield Tower. But on the 21st of May 1471, while he was praying in there, he was then murdered. Now Henry VI founded Eton School in King's College, Cambridge. So every year, on the anniversary of his death, the deans of those colleges come here to the Tower of London and they lay a floral tribute of lilies and roses in the place where their founder was murdered. So, the Lancastrian, King Henry VI, is now dead. So the Yorkist king becomes King of England and his name was Edward IV. The 
behind you now is the bloody tower, built in the reign of Henry III in around 1220. <laughs> Originally built as the fortified entrance to enter the tower, and it was known as the Garden Tower, because it used to have the guard, which is now gone. It was between 1220 and 1280, where the River Thames was pushed back, these, the outer walls were built, and this road you're standing on now was raised by 12 feet, and that's why it's known as Water Lane. Now, Edward IV dies in 1483. He dies of natural causes, dysentery being natural <laughs> in those days. He leaves behind, though, two heirs to the British throne. Twelve-year-old, uncrowned Edward V, and his younger nine-year-old brother, Prince of the Duke of York. Now, Edward uh, and his brother were deemed too young to rule England, and both of them were declared illegitimate by Parliament, and their uncle was then crowned Richard III. The boys are born to the Tower of London, they were held in various locations, but ended up in the Bloody Tower. But, by August, September of 1483, they had both disappeared, and they were never seen again. Now, Richard III, he was killed two years later at the Battle of Bosworth Field, by an army led by a man called Henry Tudor. Henry Tudor was then crowned Henry VII. Now, Shakespeare writes about all of this in his play, Richard III, and in that play, he refers to this tower as the Tower of Blood. It became known as the Bloody Tower in the uh, early, mid uh, 16th century. Other famous prisoners kept the Bloody Tower, amongst others, was Sir Walter Raleigh. And Sir Walter Raleigh is a good example of how prisoners were generally kept from Tower of London. Boy, he was locked in there with his wife, two children, and a number of servants who looked after his everyday needs. So, we still up to tour of the tower? Yes. Excellent. Let's be heading through the Bloody Tower archway, ladies and gentlemen, to the inner ward of the Tower of London. Our work was started at the White Tower around 1078, and it took 20 years to build. And there we were, the Tower was overseen by Major Dundalk, Dundalk, and Bishop Rochester. The work of the White Tower was extremely high, and the raking then looked to be a point at the bottom, 11 feet thick at the top. In each corner is a tower, three is square, and three one round the corner there, that tower was round, which is that tower, and the Royal Observatory was first established in the town of London. But it also moved from Redditch in the later 17th century. Now the windows of the White Tower, they're not Norman. The windows were replaced by Sir Christopher Wren in the 17th century. Now, the White Tower itself is made up of four levels, three of which you can see very clearly. The top floor, that is where kings and queens of England would have lived, they were here at the Tower of London. The floor below that, that area would be for knights and the ladies. It also contains a council chamber, banker hall, and on the far side of that level, the chapel royal of St John the Evangelist, one of the finest examples of the Norman chapel in England today. It was in that chapel that the Order of the Bath was first established, one of England's highest orders for chivalry. Now, the floor below that, the largest window, that area would be for servants and retainers. There's another level to the White Tower, below ground, which is mainly used for stores and provisions. But, as time went on, it also had a far more sinister use, as that was the location of the dungeons and torture chambers. Some would argue they still torture people down there, as it today is the home of the gift shop. <laughs> uh, now, there is an exhibition here at the tower about instruments of torture, which is where the bloody tower archway is, we came through to the left of that, a smaller wooden white walkway, takes you downstairs to an exhibition about instruments of torture. Now the white tower contains the majority of the exhibitions here, the tower, arms and armour, weapons, that sort of thing. The entrance to the white tower is on the south side, the same side of the tent. As you climb that wooden staircase, about halfway up, you'll come to a small doorway within the doorway of a memorial flat. Well, it's in that area in June 1674, where excavation work uncovered the skeletal remains of two boys. These were said to be Edward the Fourth's sons, or Henry VIII's uncles, who disappeared from the Bloody Tower in 1483. Those remains are taken from here down to Westminster Abbey, where they're now interred and placed within the city's border, the area named by Charles II. So, if you look towards the uh, look towards the uh, bridge. If you look towards the Yeah, I know, I'll just uh, I'll take it back. 
the WWE process. That's outrageous. I can feel your rage welling up. Tripadvisor, tripadvisor, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> David Coleman, I've got my own section. <laughs> I don't know why I don't complain. That's it. Do you know, I was on TripAdvisor, somebody did complain about the TripAdvisor. Massive complaint from TripAdvisor. Oh, good day. Shall I tell you why? It's a funny story, actually. Although my boss didn't think it was funny, and my colleague is still living there, but it's a funny story. Uh, so, I was on TripAdvisor, did a tour like this, and uh, I pointed out the toilets, and uh, <laughs> come a couple of days later, a big paragraph on TripAdvisor, and a couple of days later, a big paragraph on TripAdvisor, how much I was horrible. Uh, I thought at one stage it was my ex-wife, but to be fair, she can spell. <laughs> I'm going to put it through a spell check before we put on some advice, that's my advice to you, by the way. Anyway, the main focus of the complaint was down there, I forced them to go to the toilets. <laughs> so, the toilets are there, you don't have to go. <laughs> it's got an authoritative voice, that's all it is, like. <laughs> Uh, so, you can see people walking the walkways now. I'm showing you how to access them by the staircase down by Traitor's Gate, the stone staircase. Uh, this side of the city of pages, they are homes of the Tower Ravens. Now, we keep seven ravens in the Tower of London. You can see five very clearly there. Uh, there's three there, one of the pages around the So, we keep seven at the Tower. The story of the Ravens as they are today goes back to the reign of Charles II. He initially wanted to get rid of the Ravens. He was there reminded of an old and long standing legend here at the Tower of London that if these Ravens leave the Tower, the White Tower will come to dust. A great disaster would befall the country, the monarchy would fall. Charles II was obviously a very superstitious man. Well, he then decreed that at all times we must keep six Ravens here at the Tower. But obviously, with this weighty burden of responsibility on our shoulders, we thought it through to keep us there. <laughs> so today we keep seven. Their secondary flight feathers are trimmed to stop them flying away. They are very well fed and looked after here at the tower. Um, in the wild, they're about the age of 10 to 12. Uh, here at the tower, Moon in usually hangs out with the corner, actually. She's in her 20s, they've had 23. And we have had other ravens that have been to their 40s. They are looked after. They're not friendly birds, to be honest with you, so you put your fingers near them and put your own pen so, I'm now showing you where kings and queens of England have lived. Let's now make a short walk to Tower Green, and I'll show you where some died. That's what I'm going to walk over. I should be throwing a single one. Yeah. <laughs> so, behind me, this is Tower Green, this grassed area. Uh, Tower Green, there's no green tower. Behind me on Tower Green, you can see this glass memorial. That, ladies and gentlemen, is a memorial to the private execution site here within the green. There were six beheadings here carried out in private. Generally, executions were carried out outside the Tower Tower Hill within Trinity Gardens. I'll tell you about these in a few moments. I'll just point out a few other buildings in this local area. To my right, in this cobble path, we'll come to the entrance of the Bloody Tower, within their exhibitions about Sir Walter Raleigh and also Ed the Four Sons. Moving round to the right, we have this very large, black and white, perfectly preserved Tudor building known as the Queen's House. Queen's House was built in 1540 during the reign of King Henry VIII. So it's one of the very few, if only, remaining Tudor buildings left in London. The others destroyed by the Great Fire of 1666. Like all the buildings in the Tower of London now, it does have a history when it comes to prisoners. Henry VIII's fifth wife, Queen Catherine Howard, was kept in there prior to her beheading in 1542. William Penn, the founder of the state of Pennsylvania, also kept a prisoner in there. And more recently, in 1941, Rudolf Hess, Adolf Hitler's deputy. On a day-to-day -day basis, the constable lives in there, and his name today is Sir Nicholas Houghton. The buildings with the blue doors either side, again, more accommodation for the Yeager Warders here in the tower. Behind me now, you can see the entrance to the bloody uh, Beecham Tower. If you were to enter the Beecham Tower, you will find on the walls nearly 100 inscriptions, or medieval graffiti are done to the walls by some of the prisoners held within the beach and tower. Some of the graffiti in there is over 500 years old. Living in that tonight, we're going to have this, the chapel wall of St. Peter and Vincola. We'll be going in there in a few moments, so I'll tell you about the chapel in a moment. Living down to the night again, we have this large building here, ladies and gentlemen. Now that's known as the Waterloo Block. 
It's officially built in 1845. It was originally constructed, it's known as the Waterloo Barracks. Now, today, it's the home of the Crown Jewels and Royal Regalia. So the entrance of the Crown Jewels is beneath that very large clock, it's a very large door, enter there, the Crown Jewels and Royal Regalia. At uh, the far end of the square, the Museum for the Royal Regiment of Fusiliers, British Infantry Regiment, and here at the Tower in 1685. Between the two is a gap. If you go through the gap to the left, that is the location of the second main set of toilets here at the Tower. <laughs> I'll reiterate, they're over there, you don't have to go. <laughs> Moving through the White Tower, that brings us to this area here, Tower Green. Now, there were six bee headings here. The first was probably the most famous, Anne Boleyn. She'd requested to be beheaded in the French man with a sword, not the block and axe. So we asked someone from France to do the job for us. The executioner here took her head from her shoulders so swiftly, so efficiently, that as he held her head up for all to see, her lips and eyes were still moving in prayer. Oh, Five God. years later, Margaret Poles paid the final price here in the Green. Uh, the following year, though, 13th of February, 1542, uh, two for one day here at the Tower, first onto the Green, Henry VIII's fifth wife, Queen Catherine Howard, second onto the green, her lady-in-waiting, Jane Boleyn, the Viscountess of Rochford, Anne Boleyn's sister-in-law. Twelve years later, 1554, uh, Lady Jane Grey makes her way from number five onto the grass area here to have her head removed from the body. And the last beheading here, 1601, Michael Robert Devereux, second Earl of Essex. So, five women, one man. Do you want to see where they're buried? Yes. yes. Why not? Why not? So they'll make our way to the chapel. Before we go, if you're coming with me to the chapel, there are a few rules. Firstly, within the chapel, there's no photography or video photography allowed, I'm afraid. Secondly, within the chapel, there's no eating, drinking or smoking. But if you've got a bottle of water, that's fine. And thirdly, gentlemen, still a place of Christian worship. So whilst you're in the chapel, please have your hats removed, unless your religion permits it, obviously. When you go into the chapel, just make your way right in and take a seat. As you go through the doorway, though, there is a small step there. It does have a tendency to catch people out, so watch your footing. Probably would have been quite... Quite a lot, but oh, wait, wait on that horse. Wow. Yeah, especially if the lights on there will be a full set. Of it's totally pulled off. Well, you're all supposed on you won't go to Well, heck, you fall over in that stuff. Oh, it was you telling me that they. Yeah. The princess killed him in the tower. Oh, okay. <laughs> Only about 11 or 12 years old. That's why it's so small. What are all the breastplates back there? Just different ones they found, I guess? Yeah, yeah, just from that. Uh, you keep the set of arms and you want that arm and you want to close your arms. Yeah. I think Charles was cool. He had a little metal flick effect going on in his. He had a little, little gold. Individually tall, but it took ages to do all that. Much more if you cheek says, I want you done like that, you do it like that. Otherwise, you ain't up on the rack. Which we're going to see. Yeah, exactly. Uh, 
and this side on. Stretch out.